Welcome back to another video. In today's video I achieved one of the rarest platinum trophies on PlayStation. That game is of course Red Dead Redemption 2 with just over 43 million copies sold worldwide. Red Dead Redemption 2 is one of the biggest selling games of all time. It sold nearly 21 million copies on PlayStation, but this game has a 0.1% platinum rate. And with trophies like these in the game, it's no wonder the platinum rate is so low. Some of these trophies took me days, one of them took me over a week. So before we start this video, as usual it's important you know this video will not contain spoilers or any of the endings. Everyone should experience this game and the last thing I want to do is spoil it for anyone. With that out of the way let's start this unbelievably tedious platinum grind. The first thing we needed to do was to simply finish the story and complete as many of the missable trophies as we go. There are a number of missable trophies in the story, these vary from finishing chapters to camp items to hobbies etc. In terms of difficulty they are some of the easiest trophies in the game, nothing compared to what is coming later. I do hope you stay tuned to experience my pain and suffering. We continue along with the story mopping up as many trophies as we can. While studying as many animals and identifying as many plants and herbs as possible, this would be very important for the latter stages of this grind, and for these trophies in particular, they require a great deal of time. After finishing the story you have a tiny bit of money to spend, so I did the pony up trophy and spent 5k across all shops. And then focused on maxing out honor or dishonor for extreme personality, and then the bountiful trophy by holding a $250 bounty in all states for 3 days. You then need to visit your fallen friends and pay your respects at all 9 graves for the paying respects trophy. I've made this clip darker and cropped it to avoid spoilers. It was now time for the It's Art trophy. This trophy is notorious for being incredibly tedious. Appearing on multiple sites top 10 for worst trophies ever. Oh, got it. The relief when I found that perfect woodpecker. That took me two real life days, I'm not kidding. The problem with this trophy is the spawn rate of the animals drop massively when you accept each hunting contract, of which there are five contracts and each requires you to find a perfect three star version of that animal. I didn't know about the spawn rates dropping until hunting request 3, after that point I went ahead and collected everything else first and it was much quicker. When you finally finish all 5 requests you are given a squirrel statue, returning home to place this on your fireplace gives you the trophy for collector's item, but you aren't done with this thing yet, oh no no no. Now it becomes even more tedious. You must then leave for 24 hours to find the statue is gone, you have to find it somewhere around the house, put it back on the fireplace and do this again 4 more times. Leaving 24 in-game hours each time before returning and placing it back. And the final time it isn't even in the house, you must travel to top of Mount Shan and finally you are done with this trophy. This trophy took me many days to finish and is one of the most pointless I've ever done. This trophy should be a platinum on its own, the fact it's a bronze trophy is a joke. Talking of long drawn out trophies it was time for grin and bear it. I used this farming spot here as it was the most reliable place to spawn a grizzly bear, for this trophy I will let the legendary Robin Williams explain it. On you do this one time! Fuck no! 18 fucking times! That's right. 18 fucking times you must survive a grizzly bear attack and kill the bear every time. This isn't difficult it's just time consuming, and again it's a bronze trophy. Rather than restarting the game after killing each one I just went off and hunted and studied animals, I would return after a few animals and the bear would spawn back every time. 18 times, Arthur is a lucky man to survive this much. I had some time off work around this point of the game and I planned to use that time working on the online trophies. I hadn't ever played online so I knew it was going to require a minimum of 50 hours. I focused on the collector role and tracked down full sets of collectibles to gain max XP every time. I hit level 50 in about 3 days. The All's Fair trophy was a little tricky as no one plays story missions anymore online. In the end I found someone to help me boost this trophy by him starting a mission and me countering the rival posse's mission. I'm very grateful to that guy, he also had the platinum for this game and understood what it took to do. What a legend. After multiplayer was done with I went back to finish the zoologist and skin deep trophies, these require you to find and study every animal in the game and then skin them. I got both trophies together by studying a timber wolf and then skinning it. Hardest animals in my opinion were the small birds. I rarely found them when they were sat still and they were almost always flying around making it very hard to study them. 
both of these again are bronze trophies and the time sink involved in both is frankly ridiculous. This took me over a week to find and skin all of them, for 100% completion there is a number of things you must do. You need to find 20 dream catches, 1 full set of cigarette cards, 30 dinosaur bones, 6 gang hideouts, random stranger encounters, 13 legendary fish, exotics requests, 20 rock carvings, all 108 missions, a few bounty contracts, max maximum dead eye health and stamina, and 90 individual mastery challenges in various categories, and that is all. There are 9 categories in the mastery challenges, each category has 10 challenges which increase in difficulty as you progress through them, honestly most of these challenges are very straightforward and take minutes, however there are a few on this challenge which you have no control over at all, I'm not sure what Rockstar were thinking including these in the game. They are just cruel, as I hadn't touched any of these yet I needed to do all 90 in one go to obtain 100% completion. The more challenges I completed was beginning to have an impact on Arthur's health. I was getting sick of them as well, his horse wasn't doing too good either. As I said earlier some of these challenges are easy and others not so much. I'll throw up a little montage now before we get to the most stupid one of all these challenges. Fucking Gambler Challenge 8, I want to meet the dickhead who came up with this challenge as it's honestly so stupid. Gambler Challenge 8 didn't sound too bad looking at it, Little did I know it would take 6 hours to finish. The challenge is, win 3 hands of blackjack with 3 hits or more, this means you need the highest possible total under 21 with 5 cards. I managed to watch 6 full episodes of The Walking Dead while sat here just pressing X. The amount of time I managed to get to 5 cards and then this happened almost all the time, see for yourself. I would either bust or amazingly the dealer would hit 21 every fucking time, this challenge had me searching all over Reddit and YouTube for help, people were suggesting all sorts of things, others just gave up. I wasn't about to quit after putting this much time into this, in the end I just waited and watched TV while I did this over and over again. This is in my opinion the worst challenge in the game, I would honestly rather do the It's Art Trophy all over again, at least on that you're making a little progress all the time. The final two hands I needed actually occurred soon after I switched locations. I don't know if it helps to do this, it's purely luck and RNG related, you have no choice but to simply wait and see what happens. I knew at this point I would obtain the platinum trophy, it didn't matter how long it took I was going to do it. If I could sit there and spam X for 6 hours I could do anything. Upon my searches I came across people saying that Gambler Challenge 9 was worse. I was kinda anxious going into this one, but honestly it wasn't that bad at all. Gambler Challenge 9 was actually easy. It was win 3 games of dominoes in a row, I know how to play dominoes in real life so I think this helped, you just need to plan every move in advance, if you're putting one tile down make sure you have something to put down after that one, obviously there is an element of RNG here as well but I found this one fun. Despite the ease this took me around an hour, I played the domino game called draw, first to 60 points wins a game, but some of the games may only give you 10 points, it depends on how many tiles the other NPCs have left and the value of those tiles. The highest I got in a single game was 96 points which is really good. Around this point I had finished most of the challenges, after winning all three games there really was only one thing left for me to do, something completely justified. It was time to shoot these guys in the fucking face. Sweet sweet revenge. Eventually I reached 89 out of the 90 needed for completion, the last challenge was Herbalist Challenge 10, cook and season all 11 different types of animal meats in the game, I happened to have 10 of them already in my inventory but I had to go out and find a crab, one more hunting trip wasn't going to hurt me. After spending 20 minutes locating a crab on a random beach I cooked it with some herbs, delicious. 90 out of 90 done and the final step to 100% completion was just a short shopping trip away. All I had to do was to travel to the trapper and buy everything I had just obtained through the 90 challenges, these upgrade your maximum dead eye, health and stamina. After spending around 3k on upgrades, it was finally done, 100% completion complete, and the trophy best in the west obtained, there is an amazing cutscene after you obtain this trophy which I won't include in this video but I will add a screenshot, it's seriously worth checking out on YouTube if you can't be bothered to go through all this. 
Honestly I'm so glad they had that in the game, all that effort to go through to obtain this trophy and Rockstar came in clutch by adding this little bit as a reward. A really nice touch and one of my favorite moments of this entire grind, but getting back to it, all that remained for the Platinum Trophy was 63 gold medals as I already had 7 from my first playthrough. So after a quick toilet break and a bite to eat it was time to finish this journey. That's better, on screen now is a little montage of me replaying as many of the easiest story missions I could find. Huge shout out here to the Platinum Chases YouTube channel whose guide on the gold medal challenges were invaluable and really helped me to achieve some of these. This story mission had one challenge and in my opinion the most frustrating of all, you needed to return a wagon to the drop off in 1 minute 45 seconds, I tried this many times before finally getting it, I managed to do it in 1 minute 43 seconds, timing on some of these challenges required perfection. Some of the challenges for gold medals were hard, some were easy and some were hilarious, like this one where you need to run away drunk and not get arrested. Arthur Shaw knows how to have a good time. Mopping up these medals took me another few days but I finally got to 69, haha. And the challenge I was saving to last was this one, home improvements for beginners, complete within 18 seconds. The quickest and easiest medal in the entire game and my 70th gold medal. And the gold rush trophy in the bag, the relief of it all being over hit me quite hard, I felt drained but mostly just happy to have done it. Platinum trophy in the bag and there was only one thing left to do, something I've wanted to do this whole time. And that was dance and celebrate because I fucking did it, this was my 25th platinum trophy and I wanted to do something special for it. I'm glad it was this game as it's a masterpiece. Rockstar usually smash it with the games but they really hit one out of the park with this game, absolutely unbelievable. In terms of difficulty I would give this Platinum a 6 out of 10, you need more patience than anything, it's now the longest Platinum trophy in terms of time I've put into a game, this game took me 222 hours, but remember I spent 6 hours playing blackjack. I'll wrap this up by saying I hope you enjoyed this video, if you are thinking about going for this trophy yourself, leave me a comment down below and ask any questions you may have. Please leave a like if you enjoyed it, it helps me out a ton, if you want to see more Platinum playthroughs see the links in the description below. Upcoming games on the channel stay tuned as I'm going to Platinum every Assassin's Creed game, I hope to have this done in the next month, so please consider subscribing with notifications turned on. That's all from me I hope you have a great day, take care of yourselves and thanks for watching I appreciate it, see you next time.